Hello YouTube, this is Dakota from Bowtie Media, and today we got another installment of This Week in EDM, where you go over songs that came out this week in EDM. How self-explanatory is that? We've got a full dapper week, which means we've got more than 30 songs and a song in every category trash to stand out. 35 songs I wanted to talk about. As always, all the songs are in a Spotify link down below. And also, I'm starting this new thing with shorts to show you a little snippet of the top 10 so you can actually hear what some of the songs sound like. So go check out the shorts that is attached to this, hopefully somewhere in the video. It's on the channel. Um, go check that out. But but uh, without any further ado, let's hop into it with the trash category, songs that I thought were pretty trash. Remember, this is just my opinion. Don't take them as gospel truth. Uh, we've got Timmy Trumpet and Detweekas with Boom, Boom, Boom. More main stage hardstyle festival bait that is just crass and unnecessary. I'm going to read you some lines uh, from this song, and you can just understand the audacity uh, to have the song. Uh, here is, here's a stanza from, uh, this song. Uh, girl, your booty is so round. I just want to lay you down. Let me take you from behind. I won't come until it's time, but if I can sleep with you, maybe I could have a taste. Put your 90 on my tongue and your booty on my face. No, that's bad. Uh, let's go to Kashmir with Take Me Home Country Roads. I typically hate country, and this is a big room remix of a classic sing-along track, um, but Kashmir literally ruined uh, a classic country song and sucked all the life out of it, uh, drowned it out with a boring big room beat that lacks any punch. Just a bad song. Don't listen to it. Then we're moving into the bad category songs that I thought were uh, just kind of bad. Uh, we've got Kygo and Jonas Brothers with Healing or Shattered Heart from the new Kygo LP, the self-titled LP out now. Um, yeah, this is just boring as hell. Uh, it doesn't really sound like Kygo and doesn't really sound like the Jonas Brothers. The song kind of just is. We've got Dylan Francis, Galantis, and Arden Jones with Pretty Low. A really rough track here. Arden's vocals are weak and the chops don't do them any justice. The beat is fast and driven, but just has no gusto to it. It's boring and honestly quite lame. Then we actually have a shocker. We've got Zed featuring Bia Miller with Out of Time, a track that I really did not enjoy. I thought it was super underwhelming. Has the recipe for kind of classic comeback Zed track, but falls on its face with flat mixing and awkward pacing. And Bia's vocals feel really distant from the rest of the production. They don't feel like they gel at all. So a track that I was uh, really not on board with. Then we've got Must Die with Frequency Knife, hard jittery dubstep on the first drop that is some of best, or some of Must Die's actually best production, um, albeit the mixing is a little weak, um, but that second drop ain't it, dog. It's a slow, boring, hard style mix that is some of the worst hard style I feel like I've heard this year, both in mixing and tonally, so not a fan of that. Uh, then we got Martin Horger and Bijou with The Power, big main stage track that just isn't all that interesting. It's supposed to be this kind of festival anthem style track, but the lyrics are kind of meaningless nonsense. Then we got Sabai and Foosley with My Heaven. Uh, for a primarily streamer that Foosley is, uh, her vocals are actually kind of great here. She's clearly got some talent in the vocal area. Uh, but production-wise, this is the same old future-based song and dance that Sabai has been making year after year after year now. So please, let's move on to this with style that's a little different, Sabai. I, I, please. Then we're moving into the meh category songs that I thought were just meh. Uh, we've got Armin Van Buren, Vise, and Leone with City Lights, a progressive Euro dance track that is cheerful and fun, but doesn't really do much else stylistically, and so I just thought it was meh. Then we got Seven Lions featuring Hilda with Easy Lover. Uh, Seven Lions has been on this house kick as of late, and it's not a bad look for him. I do think this prog house is a bit by the books, and I didn't really love uh, Hilda's vocals a ton here, or the vocal performance, but um, yeah, in the end, just thought it was okay. Then we got Conroe and Marley with Perfect World, a simple, a simple electro-pop tune that leans uh, into house that's meant to be a bit of a summer viber track. Um, yeah, but for Conroe standards, it's a little bit more on the boring side of things, though, I'd have to say. It isn't all that um, punchy uh, for a Conroe track. Then we got Burial with Phone Glow from this new double-sided EP or double-sided single kind of thing. Um, yeah, relatively simple garage track from the majority here. It's got great mixing and sampling, but it's just like a surprisingly linear track for being uh, over nine minutes long. Um, it has some weird like uh, sound design elements in it, like these ASMR style sounds that are a little funky, but I just wasn't all that impressed with Burial, and I haven't seen a lot of people really enjoy it as much either. They got Marshmallow and Pluko with Forever. Uh, Marshmallow going back to a simpler time in the kind of trap future bass music era. And I think it's actually working. I think Pluko does some heavy lifting here overall. And I felt like um, he brought a lot more to the track than I think Marshmallow did, which is a plus for me. Um, but yeah, nothing extraordinary, simple and kind of nice.
Then we got Ace Aura with Abyss from the new Eternal EP out now on Monster Cat. A heavy melodic rhythm slash color base is the name of the game here, and the synths on the drops just are felt a little tame for me, actually. I felt like this was a bit of an underwhelming single release of, or a release single of the EP. Um, I feel like some of the other songs are a bit stronger, and this one kind of just was. Um, wasn't overly vibing with this, but I did enjoy it a bit, so... Then moving into the good category songs that I thought were uh, pretty good. Uh, we've got Milk with Giga uh, from the new, or yeah, new Chompo track. 8-bit uh, dubstep that is a major throwback to the early 2010s dubstep. It's got tons of electro elements and long synth runs um, that were super common back then. It's a fun little throwback track, but something I don't think I will return to a whole bunch. Then we got Wooly and Cyclops with Flute Loops. I love the album art, by the way. Um, a stylistically fresh take on Rhythm with these quaint kind of micro drops for its finale. And I think that finale really does save the rest of the song from being this kind of mindless Rhythm banger. Um, and I actually think it turns it into something that's actually quite memorable. Then we've got Midas, Hailing, and Abandoned with Another Day. Yeah, it's your typical melodic dubstep in both its narrative and its production, uh, but it's on the upper echelon of that quality, I would say. Um, it's Midas, it's Hailing, it's Abandoned, it's Ophelia. It's kind of what you expect from all four of those. Nothing too special, but I thought it was good. Then we've got Bear Grylls and Stoned Level featuring Quiet with Save Yourself. Not gonna lie, this is typically not up my alley at all, but something about it, kind of just works. It's intense and destructive, but not to the point of being too crass, which I thought a lot of other songs were like this. So um, yeah, it, it, it kind of works for me as a Bear Grylls track. Then we got Stonebank and Birdie Scott with Crash. Uh, the Drack of All genre trades is here with a crack at a brand new style, at least I think so. There might have been one other one in the past. Um, with Future House, I think this is the first or second time uh, Stonebank has done a pure Future House track. It's fun, it's jumpy, and gets him moving, and that's all it kind of needs to be. Then we got John Summit and Cascade featuring Julia Church with Resonate, uh, Big Room Techno with relatively uh, slow tempo for a techno kind of Big Room style track. Uh, not by much though. Uh, I think it's got a great, I think it's got great mixing and another killer Julia Church performance, a uh, vocal performance here, but um, the track is just a touch boring, I would say, uh, but still enjoyed it. Then we got Rufus the Soul with Music Is Better, a simple deep house anthem about the importance of community. Um, but narratively, yeah, it's good. And production wise, it's kind of just boring by Rufus the Soul standards, I'd have to say. Nothing too over the top. It's just kind of a standard good track. Then we got Glacier with not really a fresh, raw track that is definitely a bit too short, I would say, uh, but still manages to have incredible sound design for the little time that it uh, provides. Um, it's hopefully the start of something new for Glacier, and, ex and I'm excited to hear what a fully fleshed out version of a track will like this kind of would sound like in the future in terms of um, some larger project that hopefully this is the start of. So. Then we got Nero with too many questions. Nero is making Garage now, and it's kind of great. Um, the drops have these kind of sustains that are constantly being filtered in and out, almost as if it's being mixed live, like someone has uh, the high-pass, low-pass filter, they're just vroom, 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 like the whole time. Um, yeah, this is the fourth single from a forthcoming record of theirs, and I am excited for that to come out. We got What's So Not, Benson and Lucy Lucy with Lights Go Out. Really creative track here that I would describe as, I would say, micro garage. It's not quite micro house and not quite UK garage. Um, lots of small, intricate movements that make for a pretty unique listening experience and one that I think you should just go for and listen to. That's not the kind of typical What's So Not that at least I've known in the past. Then we got Weathen uh, with feet or Weathen Weathen featuring Flodan with Stealth Bama. Uh, hybrid trap Weathen with a Flodan vocal is just great. It's on the shorter side of things, uh, but it is a constant kind of um, club track that will just give energy, and I think um, we will hear it uh, a lot in the year moving forward at festivals and clubs and sets and all that kind of stuff. So I think we're going to hear a lot more of this song. Uh, then maybe we want to, uh, but I do enjoy it. So then we got Wales and David Feldman featuring I'm all right with time. Uh, it's a shorter track, but man, does this pack a punch? Uh, this is some of my favorite Wales production to date. Uh, the classical sound design mixed with the heavy hitting bro step, uh, worked really well in tandem. And I think it's a kind of back and forth that Wales has played around with quite a bit specifically, um, him here, not as much David Feldman to my knowledge, uh, but one that actually worked really well and I thought it's great. So I enjoyed it. Then we got Control Freak with Eyes On Me. Massive kicks on this track that bring a ton of energy and pace. Um, it's got a more kind of straightforward, bassy first half that transforms into this kind of crushing hybrid trap second movement. Um, killer track all around and a great Monster Cat debut. 
Then we got Direct, Cloud9, and Kazuki with Drifting, another bright and cheery Future Garage track of a collab between Direct and Cloud9, uh, with an added Kazuki uh, as well here for a triple collab. Um, the melody is relatively simple, uh, but the backing atmosphere is what really makes this track special. Then we got Lamator featuring Hannah Storm with Care, a more reserved, chilled out track for Lamator standards. Um, it's got a heavy emphasis on that funky guitar all throughout. And Hannah Storm's vocals are great and are beautifully mixed into the track uh, with its layered vocals and chops and the drops. And um, this is a, a bit of a switch up in style for Lamator, and I think it's a good one. Then we got Last Heroes and Starseed featuring Leah B. I want to say, and Layette uh, with Different Future. A melodic bass track that lives by its killer drop sections. There are a lot of artists on this track, both vocally and production-wise, and they all manage to dris gel together quite well. Um, this is some top-tier melodic music. Then we got Charlie XCX and Lord with the girl so confusing version with Lord. Um, I mean, this is just a superior version of the original Charlie doing Charlie things, but uh, Lord is pulling off a style that's quite foreign to her norm uh, vocally, and I think it actually works quite well. Um, again, Charlie XCX is just on fire right now with this album and the million other extended deluxe, whatever you want to call them, remix versions, and um, this is another great one. We got Fox Stevenson with Don't Know What, another Fox Stevenson instant classic. Uh, real storytelling through his lyricism that's not these kind of fake love ballads uh, with a killer drum and bass backing beat. He's got a bit of a rougher sustain on these main drops to keep the track a bit unique from the rest of his discography, and it's another banger. Uh, and then we got more Kismet with Overthinking Out Loud, continually proving themselves as one of the premier sound design artists out there. This track is littered with bouncy synths, dense bass lines, and creative melodies. It's a bit of a kind of trap, future bass, color bass fusion that is right up more Kismet's alley, and it is quite mwah, so good. And we're moving into Standout. Uh, we got two tracks in Standout this week. We're starting with Sam Gallatry with more. Uh, Sam with another French house banger. Uh, but this one is a lot more distorted. We've got a distorted bass line, and the vocals kind of give this track a very distinctly rough sound that is just amazing. It's kind of part movie soundtrack, part underground club banger. Um, it just hits and works. And when we get into that deeper, darker, distorted vocal, um, I'm like, oh, yes, give me more. And finally, my number one track of the week is Jamie XX and Robin with Life, a collaboration that feels so natural. The third single from Jamie XX's forthcoming record uh, may be his best from the three yet. Um, a deep, funky house production with backing horn instrumentation uh, work together in like blissful tandem. They kind of just come together, Jamie XX and Robin as well. It's It makes sense. It all just sounds wonderful. It's fantastic. It's not too explosive, but it is just... It is just it's great. It is one of the better, most more smoother sounding tracks I have heard this year, period. So go listen to those two tracks, if anything else. So uh, but yeah, let me know what you guys have to uh, think of any of these songs in the comment section below. But other than that, I'm Dakota from Bowtie Media, and I'll see you guys in another video.